For the past year, I have been imaging deep space with the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. This little star tracker gives us an affordable foot in the door to observe and appreciate the cosmos with a digital camera. Today I'm going to be giving you my first impressions after using it for a full year and what you can expect. So first off, what does the Star Adventurer do and how does it benefit you as a photographer? Well, typically with nightscape photography, you'll find yourself putting your camera on a tripod and doing a long exposure image. This technique is just fine when you're doing wider stuff, but let's say you wanted to zoom in on something. So if we zoom in our lens all the way and then take an exposure. All right, so it just took an image and if we preview it, we can see that all the stars are streaking across the screen. But now if I go down here, and flip on the star adventure, and then take another exposure. And then look at the image. We can see that the stars are now really round. So this allows us to get longer exposure times and still get round stars. And with the use of an intervalometer, we can actually take multiple images over the course of, say, hours, and then stack those images to increase our signal. And that will allow us to see much dimmer objects in space, all thanks to the use of the Skywatcher Star Adventure. So how do I feel after a full orbit around the sun with this star tracker? Well, I have to say, this is one of the best purchases I've ever made for my photography. There isn't a more cost-effective solution to getting into astrophotography than getting this little star tracker. The Skywatcher Star Adventure gives you all of the functionality you need to get your feet wet on the technical sides of space photography while still giving it in a small and compact solution. This is a great beginner mount, but it still gives you a lot of functionality if you decide that you want to take astrophotography more seriously and hone in your craft. So doing a quick run through from the bottom to the top, the latitude adjustment base attaches to any standard photographic tripod. On top here is a dovetail finder for the actual Star Adventurer, which mounts right in. Up here is where the worm drive, the motor for the actual Star Adventurer sits, as well as your polar scope, your mode adjustment dial, and other controls as well. This mount is great for beginners because it does have a polar scope, which will get you familiar with polar aligning these equatorial type mounts, which is an important part of astrophotography in general. The Star Adventurer here comes with multiple modes to cover a wide gamut of astrophotography. Everything from sidereal or celestial tracking to solar tracking, lunar tracking, and then different speed modes from half speed to 12x speed, which is really nice for different time-lapse applications or whatever else you might use it for. The Star Adventurer Pro Pack comes with different configurations. One of the modes you can use is the ball head adapter, and that attaches right to the base here and secures. The ball head adjustment is nice because you can point your camera in any direction and then simply secure it down. Um, and you still get your normal tracking, which is really nice. One downside to using the ball head adapter is that it does cover up your polar scope. So you'll have to polar align first and then mount your camera afterwards. The other configuration you can use the Star Adventure is the declination bracket. Now I got the Pro Pack, so this came with the mount, uh, but this increases your payload to 11 pounds, which is nice if you wanna put a small refractor on here like the William Optics Space Cat 51. It does introduce you to the celestial coordinate system, which uses two axes, the right ascension, which is the actual motion of the Earth, and then declination. And this comes with this little knob, so you can do fine adjustment on your declination, which is super helpful when you're looking deep into space and you need to make just a very small adjustment to frame up your target. Another great added feature to the Star Adventure with the declination bracket is the fact that you can polar align with this attached. That way you can load up all your gear and then do your polar alignment, which I prefer because it's a little tough to get your polar alignment and then put this on because it can easily knock your polar alignment off. So this is a great feature to help you save time and headaches down the road. So now on to performance. How does the Star Adventure perform in giving us long exposure images without star trailing? What it really comes down to is your focal length. So at a wider focal length, 
I've found that I can push this out to two and a half, three minutes, um, anywhere from 24 millimeters to maybe 100 millimeters. If you push into closer to 200 millimeters or more, you will find that getting two minute exposures is a little bit harder and your hit rate will go down. You will get some images that will be well rounded as long as your polar alignment is very, very precise. But I found that your margin of error increases as you increase your focal length. 250 millimeters with the Space Cat 51 is about as much as I would go with it, unless I was doing auto guiding, which this does have an auto guide port. So now onto things that I'm not so thrilled about with the Star Adventure, a few critiques that I have. One of them is the adjustment bolts on the bottom here for polar alignment. Polar alignment is such a precise art, and with these tiny little bolts, I find that it's a little hard to do finer adjustments, um, and they can easily be knocked out of alignment. So that's something that has just caused me a lot of headaches uh, in the past year using this. You can definitely work with it. It's just a little bit of a headache trying to keep this very steady and doing fine adjustments for polar alignment. So it's so portable, so I understand why. It's just that polar alignment can be a really precise thing and these bolts sometimes don't really do a very good job. My second critique is the polar scope, not necessarily the scope itself, but the fact that it doesn't have a lit reticle, an illuminated reticle. You have to use this attachment piece and it's just a little cumbersome to use because you can't use it with the declination bracket. So I find myself having to hold it while polar aligning, but if you're changing your left and right adjustment, you have to use both of your hands, so you, it just gets very tough. So I wish there was an illuminated polar reticle in here. I have seen some people do little hacks like adding Velcro to the bracket here and then having a little night eyes light. That's a great idea, um, something I'll definitely be doing in the future to just help with polar alignment in the dark. The thing about the Star Adventure is you are going to want to get a pretty heavy duty tripod. My Manfrotto 290 works fine, but it is a little flimsy. I wish that I could have a big uh, telescope tripod to put this on just because, like I said earlier with polar alignment and stuff, things need to be very precise and very heavy duty. This is a halfway decent tripod for photography, um, but it just is a little flimsy for astrophotography. I know uh, Radian makes a really good astrophotography tripod that would pair really well with this and it has a little quick release plate on the bottom. So that's something I'm definitely going to get in the future to help with the stability of the Star Adventure. So probably my biggest gripe about the Skywatcher Star Adventure is that my particular unit doesn't do as well when you're pushed out to 250 millimeters. I find that on average, depending on the night, um, the tracking will be good for only about 30% of the images, maybe 50% on a good night. I don't know if it's because of my weight capacity or if it's just pushing the mount past its uh, mechanical abilities, but that is something that I have run into. At wider focal lengths, you don't have that issue. You can usually get two to three minute exposures, maybe even longer with the Star Adventure unguided at wider focal lengths like 24 millimeters or even 100 millimeters. Um, but when I push out to 250 with the Space Cat 51 from William Optics, I find that I have about a 50% usage rate. It tends to catch. I don't know if it's periodic error. If you guys have any more information about that, feel free to let me know in the comments below. I know it can be improved with auto guiding, but it's just disappointing that it doesn't have better tracking at this focal length straight out of the box. All right, everyone, so that concludes my first impressions review of the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. And until then, keep looking up.